Ah, 2020. The garbage fire year in which every single thing is cancelled due to COVID-19, right? Even. Halloween? Wrong. Halloween is the kind of thing you should carry in your heart all year long, spreading witchy vibes and spooky cheer wherever you go for all to hear. But how exactly do you do that? Never fear, friends, for I am here. Although I did promise myself and my husband that I would not be buying any more fabric this year, uh, Joann's released their Halloween line, and I simply couldn't help myself. So today we're going to sew some witchy clothes to help you spread that sweet, sweet Halloween cheer all year for if you are like me, you too have heard the siren song of changing leaves, pumpkin spice, and candy corn. First things first, we have to get some fabric out. Uh, we're going to make this vest in two different fabrics. We have some nice fake tarot card fabric and some nice little witchy symbol fabric. Last, we have a nice little tunic. Uh, I love tunics, they go with everything. And I believe that leggings are the best kind of pant and leggings look best with tunics. So we have this, with this nice little witchy fabric that I know is gonna be absolutely a nightmare to sew. So, to quote Lin-Manuel Miranda in the hit musical Hamilton, let's go. All right, let's put this over here. Uh, first things first, I don't really have a sewing room so much as I have an apartment in which I sew. Thank you, Jasper. Second, uh, I don't really think I got enough of this fabric. Uh, I was going to make a peplum, but uh, I don't think that's going to happen, so it's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You can stay. You can stay right here. Here, sit. Butt down. Eat this. Eat this. Over there. I started by pinning all of the pattern pieces to the fabric. Uh, fabric was folded with right sides together. I did not pre-wash my fabric because I didn't feel like it. After all pieces were pinned to the fabric, I cut them out. I just want them to have more than one layer, so I'm just going to use 
some black cotton as a lining. It's also the only thing I can find up here uh, because I am not at home in Manhattan. Um, is fusible interfacing, which I hate. So I'm not gonna use that. I then attached the pattern pieces with the outward fabric still attached to them to the fabric I found for lining. I did not find a black cotton. I found a black polyester based stretchy something that I bought for an unknown project many, many moons ago, and I cut out my lining pieces. this whole process once more with my new fabric, pinning the pattern pieces to both the outward fabric and the lining fabric, and cutting them out. I pinned all of the lining to its respective outward pieces because I like to live on the edge. I stitched those all together and then began constructing the actual vest itself. Whew, had to change. It may be Halloween in my heart, but outside it is still August. Someday. Soon, my friends. Soon. After stitching all of the lining to its respective outer pieces, I began constructing the actual vest itself. So I stitched the back piece to the two front pieces. I also stitched up the front darts. Uh, there are not a lot of pieces to this vest. You know what I love? I love when I sew a whole seam without realizing that I've run out of bobbin thread. And I must run a new one before I can actually sew anything. All right, so I have the two side bindings uh, for the grommets on here like this. Um, I did cut two and some of them, one hot side is my actual fabric, but I kind of like the contrast. Um, anyway, and now I'm going to take some Taylor's chalk and a little measuring tape um, and place them. There is a like guide, but I, um, I don't know where I put that, so uh, it's fine. Everything's fine. Um, this is very official and scientific, obviously. I think I probably only need like four, maybe? Let's call this 10 inches. It's about 10. So if I do one every two inches. It's like five. Okay. So I'm just going to go down and make a little mark. Uh, oh no, is my Taylor's chalk not going to work? Okay, it kind of works. One. Uh, I'm going to make one at three. You can't, you guys can't really see this, can you? 
I'll show you more specifically on the other side. Um, so that's one, three, five, seven, and nine. So you can kind of see I have just a little mark every couple inches for, for the grommets. I did the same thing on the other side, marking off a little dot every two inches with my tailor's chalk so that I knew where to put the grommets on both sides of the vest. Alright, I have figured out the grommets and now all I have left to do on this one is do a little um, border around the edges and this one will be all done. Moving on to the tunic, I did the same thing uh, as the vests. I laid out my fabric and then pinned my pattern pieces to it um, because that's how you sew from a pattern like this. Um, <laughs> and uh, I didn't line this one. I figured that since the fabric itself is kind of a jersey knit, it wouldn't really need any lining. Um, and I also knew that since this is a knit fabric, uh, my mom's 1950s Singer machine was already going to have some trouble sewing it because this type of fabric didn't really exist in the 50s. Um, and I didn't want to make my job any harder than it already was going to be. So I just cut out the one layer. Uh, I edited the sleeve pattern a little bit. I made it more of a three quarter rather than full length because um, I prefer three quarter sleeves. And that is that. And once everything is pinned on, we cut it all out. Last, but certainly not least, I took a strap of fabric and pinned it around the neckline of the tunic and stitched that down. I didn't feel like hemming the bottom of this tunic, so I took my pinking shears and ran them around the bottom hem so that I have a nice little spiky kind of witchy hemline for this tunic. And now for the reveal. Here I am showing you a few different ways that I would style and wear these tunics and vests. Um, I will probably not be wearing the tunic until it is fall outside as well as in my heart because the past four days here have been 90 degrees with 90% humidity and that is not conducive to tunic wearing.
you doing? Great. <laughs> All right, friends. I hope you enjoyed this fun little tutorial slash adventure uh, with sewing some little witchy Halloweeny clothes to wear all year round to spread that lovely Halloween cheer. I hope to upload every Friday and so if you enjoyed this video come back next week and I hope to see you then. Bye friends. <laughs>